What is Christmas really all about? Well, we only need to look at the word Christmas, Christ Mass, the Mass of Christ, or who is, what does this Christ mean? Well, Christ means Saviour, Messiah, and it is the Messiah, Saviour, applied to the name Jesus, Jesus the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus the Son of David, Jesus Christ, who came to this world as a human being 2,000 years ago. And we read in God's Word, the Bible, the 66 books of the Bible, the 39 in the Old Testament and the 27 in the New Testament. And we're going to look at the Micah, the prophecy that was written concerning the birthplace of Jesus Christ. And this prophecy was written down or was recorded and spoken by the prophet Micah some up to 800 years before Jesus Christ came and Jesus Christ was born in Bethlehem. Micah 5, 2. But you, O Bethlehem, Epaphrathah, who are too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me, one who is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient times. And this is speaking about a ruler who will come and his he is from ancient times. He's from the past. He is from all eternity. And he will come to, be be to Bethlehem. And he will be ruler. And he will be. The, he shall come forth for one who is to be ruler in Israel. Now Bethlehem was also the birthplace of King David. We've heard of King David who was a king of Israel. David who slayed Goliath with his, with his slingshot and the giant Goliath. Now, David also was a shepherd. And he's a type of Jesus Christ who came, all to, he came for his sheep. He came to shepherd his flock. And Jesus Christ also described himself as a shepherd many times in his teachings to show who he is and also to, 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 to proclaim to the people who would listen to him, to his sheep and those around him, that he was shepherding. He'd come to shepherd his people, to gather his people together, his elect to gather, his chosen to him and his sheep would listen to him. That's what Jesus Christ said. My sheep listen to me. My sheep know my voice and I know them and I come for them. And they will believe in him. If you're not his sheep, if you don't if you don't believe him, then you're not his sheep. But he came for his sheep, just like King David. He was a shepherd and he would protect his sheep. If one of them got lost, he'd go out and he would find the sheep. He would put the rest in place of safety. And he would go out and find that sheep and wouldn't stop until he found the sheep. And Jesus Christ is the same. He came for the lost. He came for the lost sheep of Israel, for his people. And Bethlehem means house of bread, because it used to be uh, a grain producing in, in Israel. And Jesus Christ himself called himself the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me basically will never hunger. Whoever go, go, goes to Jesus, he will provide. We hear of Jesus Christ turning two loaves and a couple of fish and multiplying the bread. And then he, he told them, I am the bread of life. And to describe who he is, that he is Lord of Lords. He created all things and he duplicated the bread to be able to feed the thousands that were there following him. So we have that prophecy by Micah. Speaking of the birthplace of Jesus Christ, and he would come and be born in Bethlehem. And we've got other prophecies written throughout the scriptures 
Isaiah, some 600 years before Jesus Christ came, wrote in Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. So we have here, speaking of a virgin, 600 years before, conceiving a virgin, conceiving to us, that's well, we know how, how, how human pregnancies happen. But here, it was a virgin who conceived. And the child will be called, or will be, Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now the thing is, people struggle with the fact that a virgin will conceive. Well, if God created all things, the DNA created life from non-living matter, then he'd have no problem if he created the DNA and created the concept and the systems to enable humans to procreate. If he created those systems, then he would have no problem in intervening and producing or enabling a virgin to be able to conceive. He created the whole systems of, crea of, of reproduction, the reproductive system in humanity and other biological living organisms. So he'd have no problem. A lot of people will struggle with that. But I don't struggle with it because even if you're looking at uh, there being no God, you'd still need non-life to become life. So that's what we're doing there. There's no life in the womb. Then suddenly there's life. What's the problem? So God created the system, the biological reproductive systems, and he's intervened and enabled a virgin to conceive. And that conception is God taking on human flesh and taking on a human nature. God no longer becomes God because there's two natures in Jesus Christ. The divine nature, the human nature, and, and the one being, Jesus Christ. One person, two natures. God incarnate. God wrapped himself in human flesh. And this was spoken of by Isaiah 600 approximately years before before Jesus Christ came. And in again in Isaiah 9, 6, we read, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. So there we have that from the throne of David, the lineage of the King David, who was the shepherd himself, would come a greater shepherd, would come one who is of old, who was from ancient days, from eternity. And he'd be called Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of, the, of his kingdom there will be no end. It will be uphold, upheld by righteousness, by his standards. The standards that God set in place for humanity in the garden. And man chose to disobey and go his own way. And so Jesus Christ, God, stepped into time, took on human flesh to save humans, to save his, the, the, the offspring of Adam and his sheep to save them and to take away the wrath of God because the wrath of God was placed on all of creation and humanity because of Adam and Eve's disobedience. But Jesus Christ came to be the wrath, to take the wrath of God on a piece of wood some 4,000 years after what happened in the garden and some six to seven, 800 years after these prophecies were written. And he would be known as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he'll come a first time, which he did, and this is what this is speaking of, to come a first time to take upon himself the sins for his people and the punishment, God's wrath upon himself. But he won't come a second time 
to take upon himself punishment, the punishment of God, the wrath of God for his people. He'll come a second time, which is going to be in the future for those who are eagerly waiting for him. And we read in Matthew, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, verses 22, sorry, 21 to 25. We read. She will bear a son and shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. So we have the fulfilment there. They were waiting because they knew the prophecies of Isaiah and Micah and the other prophecies which are in the Old Testament, speaking of Jesus Christ, Messiah, coming to t for his sheep to take upon himself the sins of his people. They were waiting for him. And he came, and just as the prophecy said he would be born in Bethlehem, he was born in Bethlehem. So that is what we celebrate as Christians at this time of year. It may not have been the exact day of his birth, of his birth, but that is insignificant. The fact is, the fact is, God became a man in Jesus Christ, took on human flesh for his sheep to take upon himself the wrath of God. Because the wrath of God remains on all those who do not believe. If you believe in Jesus Christ, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. So Jesus Christ came as a child. Then, when he was about 27, 28, 30, he started his earthly, full earthly ministry to, dis to, to demonstrate who he is, the bread of life, the way, the truth, and the life. No way to the Father but by through Jesus Christ. And he demonstrated who he was and who he is by the works and the signs that he did, the miracles, the teachings, etc. And then when the time came, the fullness of time came, he was arrested and placed on a piece of wood, nails in his feet and his hands and a spear in his side. And he died on that piece of wood, confirmed dead by the Roman soldier, Pontius Pilate. The Roman soldier went to him and said, he's dead. Pontius Pilate said, take him off the piece of wood. He was placed in a tomb by Joseph of Arimathea, a rich man's tomb. The stone was placed across the tomb and he lay in there for three days. And when three days had, was over, he rose from the dead. The disciples went to the tomb. Mary went to the tomb and it was empty. And he appeared to her in the garden as the gardener, taking us back to the Garden of Eden, where, where God is the gardener and Jesus Christ was there. He risen, he conquered death. And that's what he said during his earthly ministry. Destroy this temple and I will rebuild it in three days. And he did. He came back to life. He's the first roots of the dead. And that is why Jesus Christ came. Because death is an imposter. Death is an invader from the garden. Because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve. God put the death penalty on all of humanity. And Jesus Christ took the death penalty for his sheep. For those that will believe into him. And Jesus Christ conquered sin and death and death could not hold him because he's the first fruits and when he returns those who are eagerly waiting for him will rise from the dead and then everyone will rise to the dead and stand before the judgment seat of god stand before jesus christ to be judged by what they have done but their works will not be enough to save them because our works are not the same. We're, we can't class ourselves as good according to God's standards because all have sinned and fallen short of the standard of God. And it's by believing into Jesus Christ, accepting his sacrifice in your place for those that believe in him, in your place that he took your guilt upon himself and God's wrath was upon him 2,000 years ago. 
And if you, like I'll say it again, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And Jesus Christ will come back a second time. As it says in the scriptures, come back a second time and there will be new heavens and a new earth. Everything will be restored to its former glory, whereby the lion will lie down with the sheep and the, and the adder will, the child will play with the snakes and the adders and all this kind of thing. There'll be no more curse, no more death, no more pain. Difficult to grasp, yes, but that was how it should be. And we know biologically also that our DNA is degenerating. We are, we are degenerating. We are getting sicker with each generation. We are falling away from a perfect state and that's been happening for the past 6,000 years ago but Jesus Christ when he comes back will restore that and return it to its former glory Amen